Our opening song and all the songs in the service today have been chosen by Reverend Anne. As we begin, we wish to acknowledge the land on which we gather is Treaty 6 territory and a traditional meeting ground and home for many Indigenous peoples. And as people, we are also part of Treaty 6, and we commit ourselves to the creation of an equitable, just, and compassionate relationship throughout our shared territory. Welcome and good morning. If you're here from the for, for the first time or have been here many times before, on behalf of the congregation, I bid you welcome. The Sunday service is central to the life of this community. Worship reminds us of who we are, what we can become, how we want to live, and what we hope to give to the community and the world. My name's Lorian Kennedy. I'm your service leader for this service, and our helpers are listed on the slide. This is a special service today because our speaker, Reverend Ann Barker, is speaking for the last time at Westwood. She has been our faithful minister for 14 years, and she's now moving on to new adventures. So there'll be more about this later. We're going to have an opportunity to visit with her at the end of this service and also have a social time between two and four at Westwood. So this is the last formal service of the church here as well. And hopefully when formal services resume in the fall, you will have multi-platform options in place and can attend in person or online with equal ease. But let's pause for a minute and think about how long it's been since we were in the building together on a Sunday morning. March 8th, 2020, 119 weeks, two and nearly one third years. Hmm, I thought the crying would start later. One of the things that changed when we went online was that our chalice lighting, usually an element where one person speaks the words and another lights the chalice at the front or in the center of the room, became a shared chalice lighting. So many of you now keep a candle or a chalice nearby on Sunday morning and we light our shared flames together. It's one way we work to close the gap between time and space, the gap that has kept us physically apart from one another. If you don't have a candle at home, sometimes we play along and be the chalice, recognizing that it takes each one of us together invested to create connection and to sustain the good work of this community. So chalice is ready, let's do it one more time. 
We light our chalices this morning in the spirit of love. That's it, love. Because love, messy, imperfect love is and always will be the answer. For those of you who have gathered with us in the building, you know that one of my favorite elements and some of the other folks' favorite elements is a rainbow story where we have rainbow characters that represent each of our principles. So Alara and I worked together. This is the big moment in the service. <laughs> we worked together to create for you one last rainbow story. Imagine that. A rainbow story written and narrated by Reverend Ann Barker and brought to life by religious educator Alara Stefanik Gadet. This is green. Green represents our fourth UU principle, grow by exploring new ideas together. And this is blue. Blue represents the fifth principle, believe what your heart tells you, yet listen to others. Green and blue are resting under the peaceful shelter of the Thoughtful Place tree, chatting about summer plans and all the interesting things they dream of doing. I want to try water skiing, Green said excitedly. What fun, replied Blue. I'm sure you'll love it. It can be tricky at first, but you'll figure it out. And it's really, really fun. They were deep in conversation when Indigo came along. Indigo represents our sixth principle insist on peace and justice for the whole world. How can you just sit there? Indigo demanded. There's so much work to do in the world. We can't waste a single minute lazing around. Blue and Green were a little flabbergasted. Gee, Indigo, Blue answered, jumping to their feet. Making the world safe and healthy is important to me too. We better get to work. Green looked at the two friends, took a gentle breath, and then answered, Hang on, it's got to be okay to take a rest, to focus on joyful things, to dream. We can't be working all the time. But the world needs us, Indigo insisted. There isn't a moment to spare. Green knew that Indigo was right, that the world needs everyone to help out, to care for one another and to protect the planet. But there had to be rest and relaxation too, didn't there? While Green was pondering, Indigo and Blue had hustled off toward the community hall where there was a planning meeting coming up. There's got to be more than one way to do things, thought Green. Doesn't there? Green knew that they could ask the other rainbow friends, red and yellow, orange and violet, mama, but they were probably at the community hall and wouldn't be free to talk with Green right now. Where could Green go to get another perspective? And that's when Green got a bright idea. What about Cosmic Summer Camp? Green remembered some of the Rainbow Friends talking about a special place with wise elders. Red and Yellow had said that when you need advice from a wise person, and not just a regular wise person, like a teacher or a minister or a parent, but instead when you need a really, really, really wise person, then the place to go is Cosmic Summer Camp. It's like regular camp, with campfires and marshmallow roasts and water skiing and crafts, but it's different from any other camp because it's outside the limits of time and space, and so anyone, from anywhere, and any time, even our imaginations could be there. Green wondered if this might be a place to find answers. After all, if the wise beings take vacations, it should be okay for everyone, right? When Green arrived, there was a beautiful campfire burning, and around the campfire were four wise beings. First, there was Gaia, the wise one also known as the Great Earth Mother. Welcome, Green, Gaia spoke softly onto the breeze. What brings you to Cosmic Summer Camp? Have you come for a vacation? Green was a bit nervous, but also excited. Thank you, Gaia. I've come with a question. Then ask us, 
answered Gaia. We're happy to help if we can. Thank you, Green replied. My friend Indigo is a strong friend of the planet and the people, working hard all of the time, insisting on peace and justice. But I worry. Indigo never takes a break and seems frustrated when anyone else does. I'm wondering, don't we also need to rest, to take vacations? It seems like working endlessly will just break us all and then nothing will get done. Indeed, Gaia said in response. It is all important, work and rest. Life is an intricate web of relationships. Everything is connected and all of life has seasons and rhythms, busy times and quiet times. If you plant a field over and over again, never letting it lie fallow or rest, it will become worn out and nothing will grow. Green nodded enthusiastically. That's not to say that work isn't important, Gaia added. You care for the earth in many ways by tending it thoughtfully, being a protector, never wasting resources, nourishing depleted soil, replanting when you can. But it's essential to remember that rest is a very important part of the cycle for people and the planet. Thank you, exclaimed Green, feeling a little better. Next, around the fire, was Coyote, friend of the First Nations people. That makes sense to me, said Coyote. There's always work to be done, and sometimes we need to sit around the fire and share stories and teach lessons. People running around here and there, it can be hard for them to learn. What kind of lessons do you mean? asked Green. Lessons about life answered Coyote. Lessons about how to be brave and when to be cautious. Stories about foolish creatures and wise ones. Celebrating what is good and always learning. These are some of the important ways that people grow. I do love to sit beside a fire, said Green. Then please join us. Take a moment and roast a marshmallow and gather the wisdom you seek, said Coyote. Thank you, said Green gratefully, as they settled their self on an available stone. Then Green spoke to Purple, who was next to Coyote around the fire. Purple represents our eighth principle, practice interrupting racism and other systems of harm. I didn't realize that you were visiting Cosmic Summer Camp, Green said, so that must mean that you believe in rest at least some of the time, right? No person can keep working all the time without hurting themselves, answered Purple. My life purpose is to serve, to do the important work of interrupting harm, helping all people to feel welcome and included and especially safe. But sometimes I need to refill my own cup. That's when I like to come here and be with others who care about the world and the people, as well as caring for themselves. Can you say more about serving? asked Green. How is that different from what Indigo does? Indigo insists on peace and justice for the whole world. That is a kind of service, Purple answered, a very important one. Peace and justice for the world are important goals. But sometimes we need to look closer to home, at ourselves and our ways of being together to make sure that we are living all of our principles to the best of our ability. We serve best when we are in integrity. What's integrity? Green's voice faded out. They weren't sure of this new word. Integrity is being honest and really truly living our principles. It's important to have principles. It's even more important to behave in ways that match what we believe, Purple answered. Like how I believe that new ideas are important, said Green, but integrity means I can't just rest all the time and quit exploring. Exactly, said Purple. You need to practice what you believe, even when it's hard. But it's still okay to rest sometimes, right? Asked Green a bit nervously. Of course it is, said Purple. 
We aren't trying to be perfect. We're trying to be careful and kind. Resting is one of the ways we build the strength to serve. Finally, the last fireside visitor spoke. I'm pleased to meet you, Green. This is my first time here, too, said Adrian Marie Brown. Mine, too, said Green. I'm glad to meet you. You know, everything that everyone already said is so important that we need to rest and grow and serve the world. I really believe in all of those things, but there's one more idea I'd like to add, if that's okay. Please, said Green. I'm learning so much here. I'd be grateful if you'd share. Thank you, Adrian answered. The world can be a very troubled place sometimes, and it's important that we not hide away from difficult things. But if we're going to change the world, we need to imagine something different. If we're going to have a better life, we have to be able to dream it and then work to create it. So you're saying that it's all important. Rest, grow, and serve, but also imagine. Exactly, said Adrian with a big smile. We must imagine good things so that we can create good things. But wait, Green interrupted, starting to feel nervous again. Now we have another job, imagining. So does that mean that there's even less time for resting? I don't know, Green, Adrian laughed. When do you do your best imagining? Oh, Green smiled. Right, I do my best imagining when I'm floating on a tube in the lake, or when I'm on a long drive, and maybe sometimes when I'm doing the dishes. So that's another reason that rest is important, said Gaia. Because it's when you grow those new ideas, added Coyote. And then you're able to serve, said Purple. Imagination is at the heart of all true progress, Adrian said to Green gently. Just like you're imagining ways to take this message back to your friends right now, aren't you? Green blushed a little. They had gotten a bit distracted thinking about their friends back home. Would you like to come back with me? Green invited the wise ones. I'm sure my friends would be delighted to meet you and learn from you. Thank you, said Gaia, but we're content to be here right now. And I trust you to take the message back to your own community fire, added Coyote. Purple rose from their place at the campfire and held out a hand to Green. Sounds like you have some friends back home that you'd like to share your new learning with. Why don't we head over to the community center and you can tell them what's in your heart. You'll come with me? asked Green excitedly. Of course, said Purple. I'm ready to get back to work now. And I really believe that a life with no joy or celebration or rest is the result of systems that harm us. Systems that teach us we're never good enough, never caring enough, just never enough. And we can help one another to remember that we are enough, right? Green asked. Then that we have important work to do and that we need to take care of ourselves if we're going to be able to do it? Sounds good to me, answered Purple with a big smile. So the two friends thanked the other cosmic campers and headed back through the thoughtful place and over to the community center. Green was expecting a very serious meeting lots of arguing and debate, and was surprised with what they heard when Purple held the door open for them to enter. Music flowed out from the hall. A guitar was playing, and as they walked in, Purple and Green could see Mama raising her hands, giving the choir the signal to begin. Green had missed the last couple of choir practices and hadn't realized that the choir would be singing their favorite song for the community meeting today. The choir sang it once through, and then Mama turned to the crowd and taught them the words so they could sing along. When Mama spotted Green standing at the back of the hall, she motioned for Green to come up front and take their place. Green took Purple's hand and brought them along too. There was room for everyone in the choir.
When the song was finished, Green knew that there was more understanding in the room than Green had expected. There was learning and truth, love and justice, and most especially, peace. After all, the song says it twice, right? Oh, thank you. I'll just remind everybody that that, if you want to share that video with somebody else, it will be in the recording of this service on our Westwood YouTube site. So it'll be there for anybody to see again any other time they want. One of the ways we connect with each other in community is by sharing our concerns and our joys. So I invite you to type yours in the chat while the music plays. These are not going to be recorded. If you have expressions of gratitude, save them for a little bit later because those will be read into the service and then they will be recorded. So I invite you now to type your candles into the chat while Jennifer plays for us. light one final candle for all the joys and concerns that remain in our hearts and not typed into the chat. <laughs> 
So please meet, join me now in the affirmation that you can see on the screen. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. <clears throat> As we have transitioned to online services, our methods of giving have changed, but the ritual of actively participating in the life of our community by contributing our resources of both time and money remain. This is both a practical and a spiritual right. We are privileged to have the responsibility and the freedom of paying our own way. I invite you to contribute to sustain our wider community through e-transfers or other methods you see on this slide or find on our Westwood website. And I invite you now to sing along with Rebecca, stay muted please, um, our operatory song. I'm going to mute myself so I can sing too. From you I receive So I want to say before I begin that um, because it is Pride Month, I will share with you that this element of the service known to many as the homily is lovingly known in our house as the homily. Here we go. To everything there is a season, birth and new beginnings, the breath of fresh air, spirit of the East. Fire and passion, the building and burning energy of the South, the summer solstice, which will peak this coming Tuesday. Flow and confluence, the rhythm of the tides, waves of West. Solid and established, steadfast through the dark seasons, spirit of the North. We have known them all in our time together. Cycled through, honored and celebrated the shifts and transitions of the seasons of our lives. Welcomed new people, deepened relationships with those who stay, watched the children grow and the elders slow and lovingly released those who have moved on. Change is a given. It may be our only birthright that we can consistently count on change. But we are a people unsatisfied with chance. We are a people who choose to shape our own lives, forge our own meaning from the good and the bad and all the other options. We are a people who set intentions and carry them out because we believe in good and right and true because we are a people who believe in love. The rainbow people have already said everything I want to say to you this morning. Rest, grow, serve, imagine. Imagine the beautiful world that is your heart's greatest desire and give your life to it, caring for yourself and others at the same time. Rest, grow, serve, imagine. We have done all of these things together. We believe in possibility, in a world that doesn't just have room for everyone, but a world that carefully makes room for everyone. A world that is an interdependent experience of lifelong learning. 
we are not in charge of all of the outcomes, but we are able to influence the inputs and the processes and the ways we hold and carry the outcomes that we are not able to control. The ways we hold and carry ourselves and one another. Rest, grow, serve, imagine, repeat. I believe in you. I will always love you. If there is one thing that you remember from this service, from our 14 years together, let it be that. If you are worried or afraid, especially when you are angry or frustrated or sad or lonely, even when you are so filled with celebration and joy that you can't see straight, I believe in you and I will always love you. May you be filled with loving kindness. May we be filled with loving kindness. May all be filled with loving kindness. Blessed be. When the summer sun is shining over her golden land and sea, and the flowers in the hedgerow welcome butterfly and bee, then my open heart is glowing, full of warmth for everyone, and I feel an inner beauty which reflects the Now is our time for gratitude, and our president, Susan, will start us off on behalf of the board. Yes, Ann, our minister, Reverend Ann Barker. On behalf of the board, I want to express our deep gratitude to you for agreeing to be our minister 14 years ago. I know it was a big decision for you that it involved sacrifices, a big move for you and Lori and your family. And we want you and Lori to know how very grateful we are for making the move from Saskabush to Edmonton. The board has really appreciated all the wisdom, the warmth, the helpful suggestions you brought to our board meetings and to the many, many email exchanges we had when we had a problem situation. Thank you for your willingness to listen when disagreement was expressed. Somebody once said, the first duty of love is to listen. And I know how 
you tried your very best to listen, even when it was difficult. We really appreciate and have appreciated and will continue to remember and appreciate your strong communication skills, your creativity, your warmth, and your analytical ability. We want you to know how crucially helpful your tech savvy know-how <laughs> has been for us as Westwood uh, was thrown into the pandemic these past two years. The way you rose up and met the challenges of being a minister during a pandemic was truly remarkable. And I can't help but at the same time, thank you, Alara, as well for getting on board with that. What a team you were. And for that, we are deeply grateful. You know, we have, we also want to express appreciation and for the way that you got along with the other staff and were such a good supervisor. And I want to recall and note how you supported us when we felt we needed to take a break from the heavy lifting of uh, doing another winter solstice. And you supported us in taking that break. And then how you encouraged us to rise up again and offer another one and another one in new forms and new ways. I also recall, and I know the board and all of Westwood has tremendous gratitude for how present you were to us and to the larger community, guiding us and companioning us through our grief when we were suffering in the wake of some very dear Westwood members. I know I could go on, I should go on. <laughs> There's a saying by some ancient poet that there are are, there's a thousand ways to kiss the ground and there's a thousand plus ways that you have helped us. I know I've left out a thing or 2000, um, but I wanna leave some for others to mention because there is a place in the uh, order of service for more mentioning of specific things. And uh, I also wanna say thank you for working your magic in persuading your wife and life partner, Lori, to come along with you 14 <laughs> years ago. That was a bonus, extra special, precious gift for Westwood. And uh, yeah, just wanna thank you for choosing Lori as your partner, as your wife and to you, Lori, I extend a special thank you for coming along. You know, both of you participated as enthusiastic members at so many Westwood events, workshops, even if you weren't leading them, you attended birthday bashes, concerts, fundraisers. It really meant a lot. It really inspired and encouraged the board knowing that you were right in there with us. So I wanna close now. Thank you, Anne, for all you have done, for all the ways, all the important ways you have been with us, for the ways that you model Unitarian Universalism, good relationship, community, growth, and rest to us. On behalf of the Westwood Board and all of Westwood, thank you, Anne, for 14 fulsome years. Thank you so much, Susan, for those kind words. So what we're going to do now is if, if you would like to speak something, uh, just stick your hand up or you can use the technical hand that goes up and we will call on you. Um, or if you would like, you could type something into the chat and these are going to be read so that 
they will be part of the recorded service. So I'm going to start to give you a chance to get things typed into the chat. I was part of the search committee that started in 2007 to set out finding a new minister for Westwood. And we were so delighted when Reverend Anne accepted and started with us in the fall of 2008. She was a freshly minted minister and was willing to enter into Westwood's view of shared ministry with us where members play an active role. I've treasured her as our minister with her creativity, her compassion, her flexibility, and her motto of compassionate imperfection has made many of us braver and more willing to try stretching into new things. We're sure gonna miss her. So, um, Bruce, I think you had some things you wanted to say. You'll need to unmute yourself. Are you there, Bruce? I'm <laughs> oh, here. okay, good. And uh, I, I am glad to be here. Uh, you know, I was I was the first West Woodian to uh, to meet Anne face to face, as she as she mentioned before the the service got going, and and uh, uh, we did a little tour of of the city, and uh, and I remember dropping her off at uh, at the uh, at a, a bed and breakfast, I think, uh, uh, to to stay the night, and uh, and then we were to. Uh, we were to go down to Red Deer for uh, for a, a trial uh, uh, sermon, and uh, uh, I don't I don't remember exactly how that that went. But of course, we were uh, uh, we were supposed to keep all of this very hush hush. Nobody was supposed to know what was going on. Nobody was supposed to know that uh, uh, that uh, Anne, Anne was in town and was. Uh, doing doing a dry run kind of thing uh and and i don't remember what i told Lindsay about why i went down to uh, uh to to red deer that day uh, I, I must have had some excuse for uh, for for why we, we went away but uh, uh we did go down there had a uh, had a lovely day and and then uh, comported herself uh, very very well and uh, uh the net result was that uh, uh, she came to be the uh, the, the minister at uh, at Westwood. Uh, I can't believe that it's fourteen years. Uh, I, I really can't. That's that's just amazing to me that uh, that it's been that long. So uh, uh, I'm I just want to wish you and and Laurie all the best. I, Edmonton is going to be uh, uh, poorer for your absence here from here. Uh, you know, because uh, uh, you're, you're more than just uh, just the uh, uh, the minister at Westwood. Uh, you're you're a part of this city, and uh, and uh, and I'm going to miss your hugs. I you know, I, I I had a lot of really good hugs after the services uh, on Sunday mornings. Uh, it's been a while, but uh, uh, I'll miss those hugs. Maybe maybe I'll get another one this afternoon. You can count on it. So, okay. So <laughs> that's it. That's it for me. All the best, uh, uh, Anne and and Laurie, and uh, take care. Okay, um, Heather. I'll give you the mic next. Okay. <sighs> All right. So, I got an email, and it's from Maureen. Oh, Alora, I always butcher your last name. I should. My mom, it's known it's you Steph forever. Yeah, literally, Stephaniek. but that's okay. Stefaniuk. Stefaniuk. So this yeah, is from my Marine mama, Stephaniek, which is Alara's mama. <laughs> and Alara's mama says this: "Thank you for inspiring Alara for a vocation to ministry by gracious example, giving a vision for their future." and standing by the work of the young people at Westwood. And um, I didn't write anything myself. Mm -hmm. 
And I remember when I came, okay. <laughs> All right, I got this. <laughs> So when I came back to Edmonton, I was 25, which was 10 years ago. And I had never known a minister. I didn't, didn't think I liked ministers. I didn't think I needed a minister. And I needed a minister and I needed you. And it has been a deep joy and privilege and honor to have been with you on the worship committee for like, I don't know, the last eight, eight-ish Ever. years. Forever. Forever. <laughs> and although I am way too dyslexic to do a master's of theology for that to be a pleasant or a successful experience, I feel like um, by understanding ministerial, mis like mission work in a new way, that you have unearthed something in me that I think needed to come out. And I am so grateful and I'm a total mess. <laughs> <laughs> me too. And Lori, you are the funniest fucking person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess I wanna end by saying, Think something else. And it's a quote. And the quote is this People might not remember what you said, said or what you did, but people will always remember the way you made them feel. So, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you immensely. And I've put a Google Calendar alert for two years from now when I finally get to talk to you again. <laughs> thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. And Judy, you have your hand up. Thank you. Thank you. Alara and Anne. See? Thanks, Heather. <laughs> 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 um so nine years ago we uh 10 years ago we moved from Edmonton about nine years ago we found Westwood and it was the cozy home like Calgary was and I am so grateful um because yes um I was able to um share it with my family but more importantly it was something I did for me and uh, with the openness that Alara, you bring with your um, adventures and your spirit and your tree that you created um, and on the cards, those uh, cards that we would send to people. You are just so full. And you um, always challenge people to more opportunities um, you're, and to be creative. I think that's one of the things I got from you because you created all of your characters. And I remember starting out, and though I didn't uh, have as many um, attendances near the end, um, it was amazing. It was amazing to see the new characters you created. So on this new journey forward um, in your ministerial life, I am... There's, there was a saying about we all can't be in the parade, but sometimes it's important just to sit on the sidewalk and wave and cheer as we're going by. So as you go through forward in your ministry, no, I'm cheering and waving. And Anne, what a wonderful welcome to come to Westwood. Um, because it has been home and I get to be there and cry like I'm doing now. Um, I got to celebrate with music and cry when Steve played it and uh, get to know a community that felt safe. And even if we had differences, it was still felt like a safe place to be. So sitting on the sidelines, cheering you on, waiting for that two year mark. Know that um, I'm a uh, clapping and setting love to you and to Lori 
and you have done nothing but fill our lives. Thank you, congratulations, and be well. Thank you so much. I, I wanna ask a favor of the folks in the church building because you are all teeny tiny in that window, we can't tell who's there. Um, I know Rebecca is hosting this morning, but I wonder if someone would be willing to type into the chat who is present in the church building, just so we know who's there. We know the connection isn't great enough to really hear from people, but I think you can type in the chat. Now they're frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And it's okay so, if you don't want to speak aloud, if you want to type in the chat. Um, Lisa is here and she has volunteered to read messages aloud if you'd rather type them in the chat so that um, folks who are just listening can hear them and they go into the yeah. into the video. So I'll call on Lisa now. I think there's something in the chat, Lisa. Yeah, there's there's two messages in the chat. One is from Mike and Rita. We will always cherish our memories of Westwood and of Anne and Lori for all the support they have given us over the years. They will always have a place in our hearts. Our lives have been enriched for knowing two amazing people. Blessings, Rita and Mike. And the second message is from Gail Stevens. And that your loving energy welcomed me to Unitarian Universalism many years ago in Saskatoon. Luckily, we reconnected recently here, only for me to find that you are returning to Saskatoon. <laughs> Lucky Saskatoon, your loving energy stays with me wherever you are. And my loving energy goes with you and Lori as you enter your next adventure together. Blessed be. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Elara, you had your hand up. Yep. <laughs> I'm in the queue. Oh. So I've been racking my brain for weeks trying to figure out what I wanted to say today. And I honestly still don't know. But I want to say that when I first walked into Westwood again, returning whenever it was 12 years ago, I came back to Edmonton so broken. And in so many ways that I don't even know how to name and your ministry brought me back together again. And then when I came into my role as DRE, I remember us all being concerned about me losing you as a minister because that relationship would shift into a professional one. And I just wanna say that that shift in relationship and our journeying together over these last 12 years have brought me together in ways I didn't even know were broken. And that was a thing I needed to say out loud. Anyways, I think I think that's the that's what I have space for saying right now. But I'm really grateful that there will be other spaces to say all of the things. Thank you. Thank you, Lara. Lisa. Um, first, I'll say who's at um, Westwood, and then I'll say what I want to. Anna and Lori. So at Westwood this morning, we have Sylvia Crow, Jerry and Marita, Alfred, Etta, Havelock and Darlene and Rebecca. Awesome. Thank you. And I just, uh, you, as you know, I was raised in the Jewish tradition and I was never a churchy person, never intended to join a church, never even thought about church, um, was reluctant to even go to Westwood <laughs> initially. But when I first saw you, Anne, and your homily that morning that I came and the rainbow story, I, I was hooked and I've been in Westwood for 10 years. I just wanted to thank you for beautiful memories. Um, Lori, the way we would laugh at those fourth Friday games. I mean, I busted a gut more than once. <laughs> That's a precious memory in our lives. And the fourth Fridays in general were just magical for me and the kids. And 
they talk fondly of Westwood and I just wanna thank you for giving them a religious experience and upbringing and to let them know that um, you know, the world is bigger than them. And it was really important, especially in retrospect, I'm just super grateful that we were able to find you and experience that. And, you know, frankly, I'm quite used to saying goodbye to people being in academia. And I know that this isn't goodbye, goodbye. So I'm, I'm not going to, I don't, I'm not going to feel like this is forever. Um, I wish you wonderful new journeys in your life from here. I know that we'll see each other again. And, uh, and thank you for helping me through intense grief during the time that I was there. I, I, don't know how I would have gotten through those moments without your counsel. And Alara, you are family. I am I would not have met you if I had not come to Westwood. And I love you so much. And I, I am so grateful that we're in each other's lives. And for me, this isn't goodbye. It's enjoy your next journey. And I will be in your journey as, as it happens. And, and Alara, much more intensively in your journey. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Is there anyone else who wants to say something now? I have another message uh, in the chat from Jen okay. P. And I am deeply grateful for your ministry, for all the ways you've influenced Westwood, and for the many perspectives that you've opened my eyes to in your homilies. I like to say homilies now. That was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> the family thought I wouldn't say it out loud so I had to do it <laughs> oh I see Etta standing in front of the hi and I want to thank you for visiting me when I was in the hospital with my hip replaced and with my stupidity and maybe the way it helped healed had something to do with your kind thoughts and I, I will you. I like your stories <laughs> I like the rainbow stories and I wish you and Lori all the best in the future and we will miss you thank, thank you, you Anna. Anna. <laughs> I think there's something else in the chat is there or is, is okay. Okay. Well, I think that was the last one Hi, it's Sylvia Crow, and I'm very sad that Lori and Nan that you're leaving it. Okay. Um, should I repeat it? Uh, if you could put it in the chat, that would be better. And so on behalf. So I'm afraid the sound quality is, it's pretty hard to understand. So, uh, I'm so sorry, Lori and Ann, that you're leaving Edmonton. And I say this as well on behalf of UCE. Uh, we re really appreciate so much all the contributions that you made to the city and to Unitarianism. And... Uh, I, and And they can't hear you. They can't hear me. Okay, we got a real problem. Thank you, Sylvia. So we I, could definitely I, I, hear enough to get a sense of what you were saying. And okay. Well, I just want to say thank you that um, th that was okay. one of the other blessings of the pandemic time was that um, you know UCE and Westwood have always done stuff together, but to be able to help each other to get online and to work together on our services was really profoundly wonderful and transformative. Can I and see? Oh, it's just okay. coming through delayed. Okay, I think Judy has her hand up once more. And we appreciate all the contributions. Hi, thank you. Sorry, you know, I wanted to, uh, when we were typing and Rainbow Friends were on and they said, hold, hold your comments if you want to say something. Thank you so much for Rainbow Friends, for Lara and, and Anne. Oh my gosh, to be able to sit on the floor with, with all ages that would sit on the floor 
um, oh, I'm sorry. I think there's someone speaking. Oh, it's it's just the delayed Westwood message coming through. Okay. This okay. <laughs> um, that was amazing. And I know that uh, when Gabrielle came, we all enjoyed that. Um, so that has brought um, so much joy uh, to, to be able to have rainbow friends and one last rainbow friend. Um, that sparking actually, um, I guess that loss, right? Because it was such, there were such beautiful, thoughtful stories and so much creativity. And I have to say, I love the felt. I love the felt. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. We really wanted to leave you with one final rainbow story. And that was a true labor of love. And I didn't even get to see it until yesterday. And then I watched it like 27 times. I really encourage you to when the recording comes out to just queue up to that part and watch it again, because it is full of secrets and surprises. There are all kinds of things. And if you missed when coyotes marshmallow catches on fire, you really need to see that. But there are all kinds of goofy things that are happening in the background, um, like how marshmallows magically come from Gaia's tummy. But anyway, I I'm so grateful for that. And I really hope that you do that. We'll, when the recording comes up, we'll put the link straight to the story in the comments underneath it. And then, um, you can share just the story with folks if you would like to, but it is totally worth it to watch for all the goofy things that happen that are surprises. I know I missed half the story the first time I, I heard it because I was laughing so hard at some of the funny things. Okay, if I, I don't see any other hands. So Anne, I, I think you wanted to have your turn. <laughs> oh, I think, did, I, did we have some? Oh no, that was just the Sylvia message yeah. in the chat, thanks. Yes, thank you. I, um, I couldn't be more grateful to Westwood for taking a chance on me when I was um, freshly hatched and not even fully minted. Now I'm mixing my metaphors. Um, and when I came here, it was on the condition that I passed the Ministerial Fellowship Committee that first year. And if I didn't, then we would have just had a lovely contract year together. But if I did, then the congregation um, could vote on whether to call me or keep me as their minister. So I often tease people that I've never been in regular search, but actually I had a whole candidating year when I first came here. And it was such a gift to meet you. And there are so many of you in this room that were here those very first days and are so dear and precious to me. And I feel like I hear your wonderful world, words about the things I've brought to Westwood, but I would be remiss if I didn't tell you how much you brought to me and how you shaped me and you shaped the minister I have become and the memories of my time here and the learning, you know how learning settle in over time, you will continue to shape me for the rest of my life through that through that magical memory system that just always is introducing something new into our story. I am so grateful for the time that I have had here with you. And I'm trying not to thank specific people because there would be people I don't name and then that would be wrong and stupid. But I do want to say um, that I asked Lorian to be my service leader this morning because not only is she the incoming president, we didn't know that when I asked her, um, but she is also the one remaining Westwood member from that original search committee team. So she is one of those faces from that very first secret visit. <laughs> and, uh, and it was just really precious to me. Thank you, Lorian, that you were willing to do this. And thank you to all of the worship team, that's Lisa and Heather and Alara, who took parts in this service, Alara bringing the story to life and Lisa and Heather reading this morning. And Susan, thank you for those kind words on behalf of the board. It was a, a, such a remarkable way to begin this conversation and um, choked me up really hard. It was hard to come back from that. Thank you. Thank you for your graciousness. And thank you. So I think there is one more message in the chat if, if Lisa would like to read that. 
Yes, this is from Brenda and Rev, Ann and Lori, you always made everything feel so welcoming and I wish you both the best in everything you do. Westwood is much better for everything you've done for us. I'd like to give a big virtual hug to Ann, Lori and Alara today. Our family is celebrating Father's Day for my 90 year old dad. Ah, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. We're going to have a musical tribute now from Harmonia. It's a special song.
way to go, you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, let's spotlight Lorian too for the recording there. Great. Thank you. Ooh. That was really beautiful and I really appreciate it. Thank you to Rebecca and her musical mastery and to Harmonia and to the lovely humans who bent the words to be our story. And um, I'm super grateful for that. Now let's bring our candles and chalices forward one last time together as we prepare to close the service and complete our shared ministry. The chalice extinguishing part is quite a ways off. So you're welcome to set them down if you like, because you've got parts to read on the screen and I've got parts to read on the screen. And Lorian is going to read the congregation parts so you can stay muted, but we really hope you read along at home with her that we share this covenantal back and forth ritual together. Here we go. For 14 years, we have shared this free pulpit and you have offered me the freedom of creativity in worship, gifts for which I am grateful. I hereby return the ministry of worship to the congregation. May you speak the truth in love to one another to continue to find reverence, relevance, and meaning together. We thank you for your service in our pulpit. We accept the power and responsibility of this freedom for ourselves and release you from your service as worship leader. You have welcomed me into the transitional moments of your lives times of sorrow and crisis and also of great joy. It has been my honor and privilege to care for you in times of need. I now return the ministry of pastoral care to your hands. May you continue to bring that special Westwood brand of comfort and celebration to the seasons and passages of one another's lives. We thank you for the pastoral care you've offered us. We accept its power of compassion for ourselves and release you from your role as pastoral caregiver. You have asked me to guide and encourage you in works and practices of peace, justice, and transformation, inspiring one another to build a better world. I return the prophetic ministry to your hands May you continue to share the teachings of Unitarian Universalism beyond Westwood's walls in service to this hurting world. We thank you for your prophetic voice. We accept it for ourselves and release you from your service as our guide towards the work of peace, justice, and transformation. When you called me as your professional leader, you granted me the authority to supervise staff and to coordinate the many ministries of this congregation. Today, I return this administrative responsibility to you. May you guide yourselves with courage and wisdom toward a strong and sure future. We thank you for your professional leadership we accept its power of vision and knowledge and release you from your call as our professional leader. On Thursday, the covenant, following the covenantal guidelines of the Unitarian Universalist Ministers Association, we take our leave from one another by closing communication for the next two years. Recognizing our shared humanity, our gifts and our imperfections. We know that there may be words left unspoken, expressions of joy or concern that linger, projects or dreams left incomplete. We may wish there was more time for letting go and saying goodbye. May we gently hold the well being of Westwood first and foremost, focusing on the good work we have done together as we each move through this transition in our own way. We thank you 
for your humanity, your honest imperfection, and for holding the well-being of Westwood with such high regard. We accept full responsibility for our own well-being now and place our trust in the care of our lay leadership and the wisdom of the whole. The light of our shared ministry will be extinguished today, but our respective ministries will continue separately. Our separate fires will bring light to the world in new and unique ways. So now is the time to extinguish your chalice. And there's two more slides. With love and gratitude, I release you from our covenant with one another. Go your way in peace, truth, and love. With love and gratitude, we release you from our covenant with one another. Go your way in peace, truth, and love.
Can I tuck in one more gratitude for our fantastic Westwood musicians? One of the gifts Westwood has is a diversity of musicians. And I'm so grateful for Jennifer and Rebecca and Harmonia today, but all of our musicians have just been lovely and wonderful, each bringing special and unique talents to the work.